Daphne? No, I've always been Do you have a separate binder? This is your six-month financial. Um, gives you a comparison of where we were at six months the last couple of years in 2010 as a another comparison. Um, I'm not going to go over all this because. Thank you. Ooh. Step on. You've already heard from the new cameras. I like these things. I asked her to just summarize. <laughs> yeah, there are notes in the back that refer to a couple of things. I will tell you that we are you're a little ahead on your revenues right now. You're a little ahead on your expenditures right now, but you're about where you were the same time. Good. Thanks, so, That's all we're going to say about that. All right. So that's the end of that book. That's the end of that book. So if you go to the finance tab, yeah, the first the sheet there is something that I've done for you the last couple of years. It is the personnel broken down by what is the board of commissioners and what is all those elected mm -hmm. offices and a comparison. Mm -hmm. um, the last two columns, the first one shows you what happened from 2010 to 2011, which is the year of reduction in force. Um, and then the last column is where we are from 2019 compared to 2010. Um, You'll see that what falls under the board commissioners is still at 23 positions less than it was in 2010. Um, but the net county is up 14, or it's, it's still down 33 positions, but it's up 14 positions from where it was. And that reduction from 2000. Since the reduction. Since the reduction. So you had the reduction. But you've gained, they've done, gained back 14, but all the positions that were gained back are gained back in the elected officials right. and other offices, not so, in what falls under the board. So your net, your net gain since prior to the reduction, where were we at with that? Um, you went you know, down 47 total positions still down in the reduction, four. and you're still down 33. Okay. But all of the ones that have gained have been in the departments outside of the board of commissioners. Correct. You're still at the same place. Very aware of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the next um, page is that breakdown we always do at the end of the budget and millage. Um, just a reminder of where, if you break down every dollar, where does it go? Um, and you'll see where the vast majority of those go. Um, so it's the industrial authority 4.95. Oh, that's the percentage of the dollar. Mm -hmm. Is that like the one mil? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's up to the board? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Same way with uh, recreation authority, the mm -hmm. one and a quarter. Um, is that what it is, Bill? One and a quarter? Yeah. I think that's right. One and a quarter? One and a quarter is parks. Oh, right. and I couldn't remember one that. One is industrial. Yeah. Um, page three. Uh, again, we have this slide from every year. This is comparing your digest and the levies, and then it shows you um, what changes happen in, some of, in those years um, to reflect those differences. So the two things that I really want to talk about today, the first one is property tax. And we've kind of, kind of talked about this before. That is one of our largest sources of revenue for the general fund. And for years, we had three, three and a half percent or better growth, and we could count on that. But as you all know, for the last several years, we've said, okay, our property tax looks like it's going to be basically flat. So we we kind of talked about some of this last year and started digging into it, but this year what I did is I went back and asked the tax commissioner for the consolidation sheets for each government for the last 10 years. And it also breaks it down by each type, um, whether it's commercial, residential, industrial. And so I wanted to do some analysis of that and see where the problem is because we see a lot of rezoning requests, new subdivisions, and things like that, but we still see basically <coughs> flat property tax. So the first, um, page four, 
shows you what the top, the total digest is done. So, I mean, there's there's a pretty good jump in the digest um, for 2018. Um, if you look at page five, that is going to compare your incorporated versus your unincorporated. And what you see is those are getting very close to being even at this point. So then I decided to break those down by each city and by the, the unincorporated. So the first one you see there is the city of Valdosta. That is the trend on their property tax, or on their digest. The digest is the property tax. It, it's the value. That's your That's what your value is. Yeah, I got it. So that's the city of Valdosta. I put the other four cities on the next page. Um, now, excuse me, just for clarification to make sure. That this digest number that you're providing is the total digest, commercial, residential. That is, yes, that, that is everything. It's all of them. Mm -hmm. That's everything. In your data, do you have a, a percentage decrease since 2015? <coughs> I guess I could talk about it. Well, I have, I mean, I have all the backup data for this, back at the office, and I can get that off for you. Um, on page seven, these are the smaller cities. Um, Lake Park had a little bit of an uptick um, this past year. I think they had some um, apartments that they built. Um, and the city of Hayhara has some pretty good growth, but everybody else is just kind of flat yeah. hanging out there. <coughs> Same thing with Hay Hyrule with the new apartment complexes up there. <coughs> okay. And then on page eight, you see the unincorporated. So those things that you know you see all those rezoning requests. And that's the reason why those digest trends are coming together. Right. But basically, we've been flat because of the decrease in the last couple of years. They're, yeah, whatever our increase was, well, they compared pulled, to their decrease. Pulled us down. There's a couple of areas <laughs> in, in yeah, the statistics we have in the CAFRA. I don't know why this is occurring, but assessed value of personal properties declined a lot. And I don't. that's usually where most small businesses turn in inventory and that sort of thing. So I don't know what's going on there. And also, the tax-exempt property has gone up mm -hmm. significantly. Yeah. So, it, and then the net result is, is, is the countywide digest is not growing. That's on the next page. So there's two areas. But the other areas seem to be growing not very modestly, but residential, commercial, and industrial are all growing. But those two areas are falling. Well. One has the net effect of reducing your digest, the exemptions. Harrison, excuse me, did you say that personal property was coming down? It's coming down, Correct. the value. Well, I think really the answer to that is, and I think all I can do is use my personal business as an example. Um, you get toward the end of the year, I reduce inventory. I get my inventory and everything down just as low as I can get it. Yeah, and a lot of the bigger businesses strive to use software and stuff to have limited inventory. That's right. Yep. I mean, they, there, there's been advancements in that. Uh, I mean, it's been on decline all the way going back to 2014. Yeah. It was up around 239 million. It's dropped to 77 million. Yeah, because it's what you have on hand at December 31. Right, right. So I think part of that is technology and uh, what you need when you need it from getting rid of yeah. just in time marketing. Right. That we, yeah. I mean, you know, you don't really order until you have to have it, and then if you don't have to have it on December 3rd, first, you sure don't order. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you also said exemptions. Yeah, I don't know about the exemptions. You may have, I don't know what's driving that up. Uh, typically, the exemptions are for things like governmental buildings, uh, churches. Um, we do know that. Frequently, a building that was a retail a church will move in there. Well, that immediately bumps out into an exemption. 
So I don't know if that's part of it. Uh, yeah, you also see as as uh, mm -hmm. you, your your schools, uh, the universities, mm -hmm. that type of situation as they acquire more property, then that moves into right. exemption. Right. Even if the county purchased something, that you know that changes. If the city does it, that changes the same thing. So you, you're going to see some more of that. <coughs> Those exemptions. Anyways. Stephanie, what all fall in the category of others? Um, that is um, your, like your mobile homes, um, your um, that's where um, I have the um, your mobile homes, your public utilities, your heavy equipment. Things like that. It's just those smaller ones that they don't really change a whole lot. So um, page nine breaks down, and it's, these are on two different axes. But really, what I wanted you to see is the trend lines, um, and this breaks down the major ones and puts everything else in that other you, category. You know which one for which, as far as the axis goes. Um. Residential is the only one on the left axis, really? and everything else is on the right. Okay. Um, but yeah, residential is increasing. Um, and then the one that you see kind of tank in there is the motor vehicles, of course. Um, the purple one, which is the one that's on the bottom at the left, you see that jump, that's where that jump in conservation happened. <coughs> so then um, I break down residential um, incorporated versus unincorporated. The red one up is the unincorporated on the residential. And that, the, that, of course, the incorporated includes all the cities, not just the city of Alaska. Um, and then I break down the commercial as well, which um, both seem to have, you know, a little bit of growth, but, and then the industrial, they both have some good growth. And then, of course, the motor vehicles, which we all know is going to happen. So, it, so basically, we're seeing almost, I guess, a reflection of that report we received last year about the number of new, I guess, uh, structures uh, in the county versus, the, I guess, the city limits. I think last year, as I said, I think the city's had about 400 or so new constructions, and in the unincorporated county, we had about 1,200 or something like that. And that's kind of possibly might be seeing. Right, but you're seeing an actual decrease in the city. Uh -huh. so. But a lot of that personal property would be in the city because most of those businesses yeah. that afford would be within city limits. Any of those cities, yeah. very few would be in these. Is there a, a new schedule on the TVT as far as our percentage? I have not seen anything from that. Did that read something that's in the legislature now? I, I haven't seen anything, and I've been trying to track legislation, but I haven't really had So this is going to increase for us. They're supposed to adjust those numbers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the metro area keeps killing us because yeah. they make that adjustment based on who gets there first, and they do, and they're like, okay, well, we'll have some more money. Okay. The, this is great. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is when we did the budget last year, um, we told you that we were not putting in any vehicles or heavy equipment because we were going to come back with a plan for how to address that. So, um, Mr. Pritchard and I have worked on this a lot. We've gotten Robin involved as well. Um, so, what we decided to do instead of just addressing those things that people requested is to look at our entire fleet and the condition of our fleet. Um, and so I have a chart back here um, that basically we went through and we, we kind of classified things and some are grouped together. You know, we have 
what heavy duty trucks we have 60. There are every variety of heavy duty trucks included in that, but just generically, how many of each of these type of vehicles do we currently have? Um, and then we determined um, how many of these absolutely need to go. They are like in such bad shape, they've got to go. So we, determined, we went through the entire fleet, what the condition of it was, and determined what needed to go. So we got a baseline of where we're at as far as vehicles that are in good condition. Then instead of saying um, a particular department has 10 vehicles, we need to get rid of three of them, so we need to buy them three. Well, how many do they actually really need? Do they really need 10, or is, is eight sufficient for what they have? Um, so we, we went through and determined what we actually needed, and then after we sell all of the junk, where are we at? So we have a couple that we can move around, so at the end of that, and we didn't include the fire and the sheriff in this because they're kind of more specialized vehicles. And the six wheel and ten wheels, a lot of those we already have a replacement plan under the current SWAS. So at the end of all this, we basically need to replace about 13 heavy duty trucks. Um, ballpark cost to replace that based on site contract prices is about $286,000. But we have paid on all those vehicles that we plan to get rid of about two hundred seventeen thousand dollars in maintenance and fuel this year. Yeah. So, Mr. Pritchard, is is <coughs> your plan at this time to address vehicles through general fund, or is it going to be through SPLOS? It is or through, through through your equipment fund. Equipment fund, fund balance, um, because it it took that fleet fund into it, which the fleet fund, the idea behind it is you build up a residual fund balance to help pay for those vehicles. And it has quite a bit of fund balance in it, so we were going to use that to, to pay for these vehicles. And if we get on this routine, then we replace this many vehicles each year. That'll put us in better um, position as far as maintenance and all goes as well. But, so based based on your fleet management fund balance, then we should be in good shape to go ahead and replace these vehicles. And some of these vehicles, as, as Stephanie indicated earlier, are scheduled for replacement through SPLOS. That's right. I anticipate having those same type of requests in the next SPLOS for some of the heavy equipment. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be uh, trucks. It may be motor grader. It may be backhoe. Okay. It may be whatever. Because all of those pieces of equipment, as I've told y'all before, have been easy to put on the back shelf as far as the demand of replacing those. But when, when we start looking at uh, dump trucks that have... 400, 500,000 miles on them. And a half a roll of haywire on them. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we have got all the goody out of those we can get. Right. So while we were in such a downturn <coughs> time, yeah. that got moved and say, can we make it another year? Can we make it another year? We can't make it another year. That's so we that's why we've done what we're yeah. recommending to y'all. And yes, it will be addressed both ways. Both ways, yeah. Both Have ways. we replaced any since our budget means? No, no, sir, because we, we were going to address it with this. Remember, we said we weren't going to address them in the budget. We were going to come back to you with a plan, All and right. this is what, what I'm asking about is the extension. Mm -hmm. they and that's some. included in this plan. It's it's there. They, they need some help. Yes, they Okay, thank uh, you. We have replaced two motor graves. That's right, two motor graves. Well, I mean, again, just based on what Mr. Pritchard just shared with us, uh, again, y'all know how hard that public works has worked to keep what vehicles we do have on the road, and at the same time, not just keep them on the road, but keep them on the road safe as well. So there comes a time, though, that as, as you can see, that your maintenance numbers and your maintenance cost outweighs the, the investment. Mm -hmm. 
to go ahead and purchase new vehicles and so we're at that point so again I think that's a great idea that you came up with and a plan to address those issues so it's good Thanks, any other financial questions Um, well, it may not be a financial question, but uh, as you know, that legislation regarding the uh, sanitation in the landfill took place. Uh, have there been any conversations in regards to a, a possible I guess, increase on the cost being passed to county residents? Well, there's a couple of things going on right now, and, and part of that has to do with the um, deep south solid waste authority. The authority is dealing with the landfill owner over uh, the cost of disposal, tipping fees. And that will be coming, I believe, from that authority back to the respective cities uh, involved and from there that will be looked at along with what you're what, uh, you're asking about to determine where we go into the future because uh, that the landfill is an advantage to us because of the funds that we get back but we also have to understand that is a uh, business and they have to operate at a profit or they're not going to stay there so we're continuing to look at that. The authorities look at that. Kevin uh, Beals is the chairman uh, now of that um, authority, and he and I have met on that, I guess, monthly for the last two or three months about where they are and the request. Some of the counties do not want to, uh, or cities do not want to look at a possible increase, but that in, there hasn't been an increase uh, I don't know, 15 years or long? Huh? Yeah, probably. Yeah. It, it's, it's been a number of years that has not been an increase, right. and uh, I don't think that you can realistically continue not to consider that. But that negotiation of that work's being done with the Deep South Sanitation oh, Authority. The authority. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Any other questions? No. Because I know that that invention is going to come into our uh, our local, I guess, uh, citizens paying, you know, their sanitation to get removed by the uh, end of the day. Mr. Chairman, it appears that your gate has shut, and we've got a reporter okay. out there trying to get in. Is there a way? Okay. Well, that, did, does oh, anybody have any questions whatsoever with financial? Are they? Are y'all leaving? Nope. So y'all going to be here? They don't have an option. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say my last question for later. I just didn't want to lose the opportunity to see they were leaving. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. If y'all do have any, we'll have plenty of time to look at this later. The um, next issue, Mr. Chairman, was one that all of you 